We're finally finding a home for this poor piece of wood. This video is sponsored by PCBWay, and today in part 4 of the Unipolar 3D Pinner build, we're going to get the Z carriage rolling, which in turn means the X-axis, which has been kind of floating around homelessly ever since I started building the gantry, will at last be part of the machine. You know, because in this style of machine, the whole X-axis constitutes the Z carriage. I also want to thank people on the last episode for knowing so much better how and when this printer should be built than I ever dreamed I could myself after designing it. It's just so amazing to have a community so eager to help. Seriously, I really appreciate feedback and suggestions for improvements from you guys, but only if they make sense. Telling me I'm using the wrong kind of bearing just because I'm not using the same bearings everyone else uses is pointless, because even if I don't say so in the video, usually I have reasons for doing what I do. So to all those armchair engineers out there, if you cannot explain why your solution is better than mine, please just keep it to yourself and do it that way on your own 3D printers. Sorry for that rant, smart asses without a clue tend to annoy me. Anyway, the first thing we need is a couple of new parts, more specifically some MDF rectangles and strips of 18mm ply. The wider ones of the plywood strips again get some notches cut out to turn them into what I've so far been referring to as springy blocks, except now I've given them the much fancier technical name Z carriage follower spring. Now, because there's probably at least one person out there who hasn't understood my intention behind mounting the roller bearings on springs, this is actually a good time to explain it. Using wood and the associated equipment to shape wood, it is utterly impossible to get these two separate aluminum rails parallel down to like a hundredth of a millimeter, aka these two edges of the bearings to ride on will be further apart in some places than others. Heck, they may even be wavy, or bowed out, or in. So by mounting two of the rollers on a spring, I can adjust them to be snug on a narrow section, and when the carriage moves along the rail, the spring compresses for the wider parts instead of the entire carriage getting stuck and hard to move. I came up with that design all by myself, and I'm actually pretty proud of it. If anyone steals it in a video without mentioning me, I'll be proper pissed. Imagine, after spending two days etching the PCBs, you just finished building the new set of race timers for your local dog race that's gonna take place this weekend. But when you switch it on for the first time, disaster strikes and the only thing that happens is a flash and a resistor disappears in a puff of smoke, vaporizing several thin tracks on the circuit board underneath it. What do you do now? You simply drop your Gerber files on PCBWay's website to get a replacement manufactured in time for you to finish your race timers before the weekend. Even better, PCBWay currently have lower prices on multi-layer boards with 4 to 6 layers, so you can hide those sensitive traces inside the boards where they can't be damaged anymore if that pesky resistor decides to go bang a second time. Thank you to PCBWay for sponsoring this episode and letting me have fun with my little story. Now, here I have a little problem. I need this edge to be exactly parallel to the line going through the center of these two holes. Why will become evident later, but because no drill ever drills exactly where it's supposed to, even though I use a drill guide to make these holes, just leaving it like this isn't gonna do. 
To solve that, I'm going to temporarily mount the ball bearings only, without their V-groove plastic sleeve, allowing me to skim cut the edge with reference to the actual position of the bearings. I previously accommodated this skim cut by making these two parts a millimeter wider than they are supposed to be, and in case you're wondering, yes, all the other edges are allowed to be slightly off with respect to this one, because this is the only edge I actually care about. The second thing I wanted to talk about is these tiny little washers. You already saw me use them as spacers between the bearings and the wood in the last episode, but I never actually covered them since there was more than enough to do with the plastic V-groove sleeves for the bearings. At my local hardware store, washers this size are insanely expensive. Like, this mostly empty clamshell package costs around 3 bucks. Since my generous $50 budget for the entire printer is mostly exhausted at this point, that meant splashing out on overpriced washers wouldn't really be possible. So I did what every reasonable individual would do and decided to make my own washers for much cheaper out of scrap metal. Ashback. And I'm not gonna lie, making these washers turned out to be a huge pain in the ass. The whole operation took me two days, mainly because after cutting 18 of these blanks, I need 16 washers and made two more spares, out of 1.5mm sheet metal, the entire basement was completely fumed up and smelled nicely of fireworks. I have no idea what kind of gases grinding steel creates, but I'm sure they are not healthy to breathe in to begin with, and seeing as most sheet metal, including the one I was using, is galvanized, and burning zinc giving off highly toxic fumes, I didn't want to spend too much time down here after that, even though the strong smell of fireworks stirred up quite a few nostalgic memories. So the day after I started grinding down the squares into rounds on the bench grinder, which constantly knocked the nut loose, so I ended up once again abusing that poor drill press to take off all that material with the angle grinder. This time I also had the clever idea of wearing a mask to stop breathing in particulates of the grinding disc and smelling fireworks hours after being done with the work. On top of that, on the two subsequent batches, I proceeded to using a hand file to take the blanks to roundness first, so I wouldn't have to stand there with all openings in my body appropriately plugged, waiting hours for expensive electricity to transform 50% of my steel blank into powder first. That took quite a toll on my angle grinder cutoff disc. But not to worry, I got these in a pack of 11 for 3 bucks, so even if I had to grind down 3 of them, my washers would have still been cheaper than the store bought ones. And these discs are garbage quality anyway. Now ain't these the cutest little washers you've ever seen? They almost look like tiny bearings. End of flashback. Second in my bag of tricks is using oversized holes here to have adjustability for my follower spring. Theoretically you could also make slots, but that's just overcomplicating things, we don't actually need that much adjustment, since as you just saw, we transfer the hole locations directly from the actual rail. Now you can see why I needed this edge to be parallel to the bearings, 
it's where the x-axis gets mounted. If these surfaces aren't in line with the z-axis rails, I might be putting twists on my x-axis. Speaking of x-axis, at some point in the future we're going to need a dado in it right around here, so it only makes sense to cut that now before we even mount it. Unfortunately, changes in humidity got my aluminum rails stuck for good, which means I can't remove them to make the cut as planned anymore, but I also don't want to risk scratching them on the table saw fence. So to protect them, I'm going to put masking tape on it. Satisfying tape peel, except it's not satisfying. And there we go, that's the x-axis mounted. There we are, last episode I asked you guys whether you want to watch me build a shredder and an extrusion machine to turn plastic waste into 3D filament and other stuff, and your response was overwhelmingly positive. That's good, because I was going to do that anyways. Only question being whether I would actually make videos about it or not. Then again, these days I rarely have time to do anything other than worry about making videos. Like, I still haven't finished my drawers, so probably wouldn't have happened. <laughs> That's how my big projects always went. I start them, I let them stew for a couple of years, and only then I'm motivated enough to actually finish them. If anyone else out there thinks I'm using the wrong whatever components, I have a Patreon. You're very welcome to pledge the right components, then I might change my mind. Hope you enjoyed. Bye bye!